blind, uh, nearly blind, but I will spare you the technical details of several surgeries I had. Uh, the, I need to read at this distance with these glasses, and I want to uh, be sure that what I'm telling is exactly what is written, so I, I will read something. <coughs> Yeah, I, I will organize this next time. In, in Frosinone they did it. They were very nice. But you know. okay, so there is, I start with a game of words. Why prices if if does not mean impact fact, but it is if the if close. Uh, statement. Uh, you know, I agree with Antonio Di Carlo. I had no occasion to publicly tell after his retirement that I feel greatly in debt towards him. Among many things, uh, we discussed many times about not exactly this statement by Mark Twain, but about the idea which is behind it. It takes a thousand men to invent a telegraph or a steam engine or a phonograph or a photograph or a telephone or any other important thing and the last man gets the credit and we forget the others. He added his little might. That is all he did. These objects lessons should teach us that 99 parts of all things that proceed from the intellect are plagiarism, pure and simple. And the lesson how to make us modest, but nothing can do that. Now, this is fundamentally true. So if you adhere to this spirit, you should never give a price for any reason. But, you know, uh, my students, my pupils, my friends say that I have uh, periodic fixations. Uh, I'm, I'm not becoming an old senile person simply because I change fixation. So this is a sign of being alive. Recently, I am starting uh, to. Uh, I started to translate into English the works by Gabriel Piola, and uh, he wrote many things. But I will tell you about him in in one of in my lecture. <coughs> I think that Gabriel Piola is uh, the source of many modern ideas in generalized continuum and also molecular dynamics. And he wrote his books uh, in the first half of 19th century. And uh, one could say that he was victim of plagiarism in, in a sense. But the reason for which I want to cite him here is that uh, he wrote the major part of his uh, works under the push of winning prizes. He answered to the call for uh, memoirs for getting a prize of the Istituto Reale di Scienze ed Arte. L'Istituto Reale uh, has been founded by Napoleon in Bologna and then Milan. And this institute was selecting subjects to be problems to be solved. And to those who solved the problem, uh, a prize was given. So in a sense, uh, we are people in general uh, who do not like earning money, or at least we could have chosen another more effective way for earning money. Uh, what we like is a little bit of recognition of what we try to do, and I think that uh, deciding to give a prize to some colleague who did a very good job and helped in understanding something in the spirit of Mark Twain, this is uh, uh, something good. So this is a kind of justification of the fact that 
course, we have chosen Eugenio Beltrami. I don't know if you know this name. He was a mathematician who wrote the equations of linear elasticity in terms of displacement. So it's somebody who uh, made a major advancement, not only in mathematical sciences, namely in differential geometry, but also in engineering sciences. So MEMOX, which is the institution, if you want to know more details about this, please go, go to this website. The Italian institution which is organizing this and some other conferences, here you can find, for instance, the list of all events, and here you can find all the videos. These are the events which we organized, and here the videos of video recorded lectures we, we organized. So what we did, we decided to uh, establish a uh, Eugenio Beltrami Prize in Engineering Sciences. Actually, the uh, push was mainly by Yves Raymond, uh, who is, could not be here today, but he's uh, a joint director of uh, INSIS. Uh, and uh, the, the academic body of MEMOX appointed him and David Stegman from Berkeley for selecting the, the winners. So before telling you that the two winners were suitably invited today here, uh, I want to tell you that also in, in uh, with discussions with Antonio many years ago, we touched the uh, formulation of Stigler law of eponymy. Following this law, no law, no scientific discover, discovery is named after its original discoverer. And, ironic enough, Stigler stated that Robert Merton had been really the inventor of Stigler law of eponymy. Okay, so we don't uh, take ourselves too seriously, but at the end of the story, uh, the, the work of people, I think, has to be recognized. So the first winner is this criminal here. He's not, uh, he's not a terrorist of any, but he's professor in Nancy, and he belongs to Georgia Tech and Lorraine, uh, but I was... Uh, astonished by the work we wrote a paper together, but you know the, the most important thing is that he's reasoning always about the equilibrium of beams, and this is the typical picture which you find in his papers. I think that his contribution to micro macro micro macro identification process is uh, Maybe not rigorous. Maybe they will say there is not a terrible mathematics behind, but there is a lot of physics behind it, and the equations we are getting, uh, we are understanding, thanks to him, are uh, very interesting, and I think will produce many uh, mathematical rigorous results and many applications. Uh, <coughs> This man does not seem a criminal because, you know, I think in the United States he's afraid. So he spent a lot of, maybe it, there was a Photoshop work on this, <laughs> right? This is also the tradition in Rome, you know, that when Caesar was having a triumph, somebody behind him was telling him bad things, everything bad possible. I will not exaggerate, but uh, Anil, uh, I met Anil where, at, when he presented in, uh, in California, I think, when he presented this paper, or maybe this other paper, second gradient continuum, and I attacked him in a way uh, which I could learn only after having seen many similar uh, where Antonio was uh, asking questions, uh, you know, I, I, I am in depth in this. Instead of answering me, 
I belong to a family of Brahmins from 4th millennium before Christ. Uh, shut up. He told me, I will accept that after the lecture you teach me what you have to teach me. And that was only for this reason he deserves the prize. Okay? And after that we had many discussions and I think he published the next version of this paper which I had the honor to communicate to continuum mechanics and thermodynamics and I think he was uh, also feeling an interesting bridge with a gap between building a bridge and filling the gap between micro discrete granular mechanics and macro second gradient continuum. Of course I am biased because uh, I worked in second gradient for so many years that I must sell uh, my stuff. But I'm working on third. Already did and no end. However, however, to due to my interaction with uh, Emilio, but Emilio Turco, but this is another story. I am back to discrete systems, so maybe at the end of my career I will try to prove that continuum models are useless. Okay, so Antonio will oblige me to come back to continua just for contradicting. Okay, so I think I've spoken even too much. Um, uh, there will be an official communication to the rectors, uh, the presidents of your universities about this. Uh, we will place the name in the, in the website. And let me comment. It is not sure that the prize is giving you reputation. Maybe it will be you who are giving reputation to the, to the press. But we will see. We will see. OK, you will have the right to uh, nominate uh, future recipients. OK, so this is a serious but not so serious moment of this conference. Let us.